Hi, sorry to keep you waiting, so sorry. It's okay. We have come halfway to the 2030 agenda, but we are falling behind. Globally speaking, it's going to take, with the current speed, 300 years before we have reached gender equality. It's of course one of the hardest nuts to crack in Kazakhstan. We are here to support, not to run. Welcome to the Astana Times. Today we will discuss uh, the work of the United Nations in Kazakhstan, Sustainable Development Goals with Mikaela Freeberg story Thank you for welcoming us at the UN House in Kazakhstan. I would like to start our, our conversation about the upcoming SDG Summit. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about uh, what its main focus and what kind of role Kazakhstan can, can play in making sure it will be a successful summit? Well, first of all, a warm welcome to the UN House. It's fantastic to have you here. Thank you for coming. The upcoming SDG summit that is taking place in mid-September later, in just about a month time, is going to be a crucial moment for the world. We have come halfway to the 2030 agenda. We have seven and a half years left and then we should reach the sustainable development goals. But we are falling behind. And this summit, when the world state leaders will get together, will be an opportunity to create new energy, new political commitment and new financing for making sure that we leave no one behind when we move forward. Can you tell us about uh, the work, the priorities that the UN has for Kazakhstan at this moment? Because, you know, a lot of work has been done in 30 years. Uh, what are priorities right now for the future? Well, first of all, the priorities for the United Nations are the Sustainable Development Goals, and they have been signed on by every country in the world. That's what makes them so unique as a global strategy for development. Everyone agrees on them. So the priority for us in Kazakhstan is to support the government in reaching the commitment that the government has. Now, when it comes to the SDG summit, the UN has identified six transformations that the world needs to focus on if we're going to have a chance to reach where we want to be in 2030. And that is to focus on the climate, on energy, education, food systems, social protection and digitalization. And that means that here in Kazakhstan we are of course also looking at how we can focus on them within the context of Kazakhstan because Kazakhstan has come very far on some of these. And then there are other issues that may still lag a little bit further behind. Mm -hmm. Can you identify them? Yeah, the, it, what is interesting is uh, Kazakhstan is very committed to the Sustainable Development Goals. And every year, a number of countries do something that we call a voluntary national review. That is when a country assesses itself on how well it's doing on implementing the SDGs. Every country does this. Uh, I'm Swedish and Sweden is also doing it. So every country does it. And Kazakhstan has done it twice. And what is really interesting here is to see that last time Kazakhstan did this, which was uh, last year, it was really interesting to see the five sustainable development goals that the people of Kazakhstan really felt were the priorities. And the first one here was actually health. That's the SDG that most people felt this is a priority. So that's, of course, one of the key issues for us. And that's why it's also so, such a great opportunity that uh, Astana will be hosting a very big WHO conference in October with over 50 ministers from the European region of WHO will be coming to Astana. So I would say that for Kazakhstan, it is quite clear that we talk about issues like Re development of the new regions, we talk about making sure that no one is left behind, we talk about focusing on, on jobs, education, healthcare, and of course the environment. Can you highlight uh, recent UN projects in Kazakhstan? First of all, I think it's important to recognize that Kazakhstan is what we call an upper middle income country. So here in Kazakhstan, the UN, we provide 
a lot of policy advice. You know, we come with comments on draft laws, on governmental policies, etc. We don't run programs in the same extent that you can think that the UN would do. Like, you know, if you see the UN agencies working in a refugee camp in another part of the world, you see the UN handing out food or you see, you know, little children being vaccinated by UN staff, by UNICEF. That is not what we do here. That's, that's the role of the government. We have more of a dialogue with the government on issues. So when we run programs, it's often pilot programs. We test. And if it works, the government can pick it up and take it to scale and know that is quality assured by the UN. So that's why, for example, we can, uh, uh, I mean, I, I was in Naktao, for example, and, and where we, uh, the UN, the ITC, had looked at ways to enhance the, the customs uh, system uh, for the harbour in something called Astana One. And this has been such a success that the revenues uh, for Kazakhstan has increased several times. And now this is an, it's like an IT system. So it's not the type of project that you think of the UN, you know, it's, it's not really showing the people in that way. At the same time, there can also be uh, some micro loans that, that the UN can do together with the uh, Damu. I once visited a beekeeper outside of Almaty who had been given a small loan um, and he'd bought a special type of bee from Austria and that started, you know, creating a beehive and made so much honey that he could pay back his loans more than twice the speed that he had planned. And then it just took off and off it went. And now they can replicate that program. So often we come in as a, as a test and then the authorities take over. Of course, when we started in, the, in Kazakhstan 30 years ago, because now we've been here for 30 years, then it was very different. Then we provided humanitarian assistance. UNICEF set up the first national vaccination register today that is owned by the Ministry of Health, of course. Mm -hmm. So that is why when you say, what does the UN do? I'm tempted to give you all these wonderful programs, but many of them, the majority, all of them, are with the Kazakh authorities, or with Kazakh organizations, or with Kazakh civil society. We are here to support, not to run. Uh, what about uh, addressing uh, issues like domestic violence, you know, uh, providing equal opportunities for women? Uh, well, how would you evaluate, uh, you know, Kazakhstan progress in, in terms of these goals? Globally speaking, it's going to take with the current speed, 300 years before we have reached gender equality. You mean globally? If we are moving at the same sp space and speed as we're doing today. So we need to move faster. And I think what we see in Kazakhstan is a political commitment to move faster. And we have seen like, uh, you know, there was this list of, of um, professions that were prohibited for mm -hmm. women. That's been abolished. We know that the president has said that he wants this evaluation of, of how to see domestic violence. Should it be a criminal offense or how should it be judged, etc. And we welcome this. But we also know that, that domestic violence in Kazakhstan is as prevalent as anywhere else. And we know that during the pandemic, uh, domestic violence really went up. And that's the reports you hear from the police, not only in Kazakhstan, but everywhere. Mm -hmm. So Kazakhstan is making progress, without a doubt. Um, and, and Kazakhstan is also taking, I would say, a regional lead in Central Asia on supporting regional initiatives to fight gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. But Kazakhstan is not without it. Unfortunately, no country is without it. Thank you. Um... Just let me check because I feel like I went off script. As the UN, you know, coordinator, you have to work and oversee different projects, but at the same time work and collaborate with different government agencies, NGOs, and et cetera. Uh, how would you evaluate, like you said, Kazakhstan is committed, but in terms of like working face to face with different agencies, state agencies, NGOs, you know, how's the collaboration is going and how are people are, you know, willing to you know, put their contribution to achieving the goals and 
making Kazakhstan you know, better, a better country? Well, first of all, I just want to say that working in Kazakhstan is a real privilege. Um, the, not only is uh, the government very open and very supportive of the United Nations, so we have an excellent relationship with the government, but the people of Kazakhstan is such an enormously hospitable uh, uh, people. And it's, it, so we have a very strong and very good relationship with, uh, with civil society as well. And this is something that I would like specifically to develop more, to, to get more insights and, and, and meet more people. Uh, that are what we sometimes refer to as grassroots, grassroots. activists and, and whether it is in the environmental sector or whether it is, uh, you know, parental group for education, whatever it might be, to get a more understanding there. But I think this is also something where the government is working themselves to create a stronger dialogue with the people of Kazakhstan. So this is something that I think we could work with. Mm -hmm. Then there's also a very vibrant private sector. As the UN, for example, when, when I first came, we had only, there's a global initiative that is called the Global Compact, which is trying to get uh, companies, private sector companies, to engage in promoting sustainable agendas in, in private business. And there were only seven companies that had signed on to these principles when I came. Now we have over 47. And the number is increasing day by day. And this is another way that we see that there is, a, there is such a potential in the, in the private sector in Kazakhstan to work on the sustainability. And I'm not talking purely about environmental issues. I'm also talking a lot about the human issues and, and about human rights, about making Kazakhstan the country that the people of Kazakhstan wants it to be. Let's move to a, you know, a very big uh, issue worldwide, climate change and how it you know, uh, cross cuts to different areas of our lives. And how UN, I would like to know how UN assists Kazakhstan in balancing its economic growth with protecting the environment, especially in the areas like energy and resource ext extraction. It's of course one of the hardest nuts to crack in Kazakhstan. Um, there is an abundance of resources in Kazakhstan, as we know. The, the, they are uh, in the ground and they are not what we call particularly green. So to balance that is, is something that Kazakhstan needs to handle and where we are keen to engage. For us, there is no, we need to diverse from, from fossil fuels. There is no other way for the world than to turn away from fossil fuels and to enhance the, the use of renewables. And here we're supporting Kazakhstan in finding ways of doing that. But it's also about finding energy efficiency, for example. Uh, and here we've had programs, some agencies, UNDP for example, have had programs on looking at uh, housing energy efficiency, getting resident areas to become more energy efficient, how can that be done? Uh, it can also be issues of, of maybe uh, farmers being more environmental. FAO, for example, Food and Agriculture Organization, is looking a lot at when it comes to uh, irrigation system, how to not waste the, the, the scarce resources of water that we have. But it can also be about empowering women. Uh, you and women have set up a number of what they call um, science, uh, uh, math, technology and engineering centers across Kazakhstan, oh, STEM. STEM, exactly, to promote these knowledge for women, to support women entrepreneurs so that they also contribute to the economy. We need to make the small and medium uh, enterprises in Kazakhstan more viable. Mm -hmm. So it can be a number of different issues. But the elephant in the room is, of course, the fossil fuel. But I think it is fair to recognize that it's a challenge. You know, every, every country is facing its own challenge. And I think there are very few countries, uh, no country actually, is fully carbon neutral. So, uh, and I think the world has to recognize that for a country like Kazakhstan, that is so relatively dependent on its fossil fuel industry and that economy, it is not going to be a straight line forward. Exactly, this is how it's done. But we, we are here as the UN to support uh, Kazakhstan uh, and also to, to try to promote investment in, in other areas and in renewables to see what can be done to support Kazakhstan in reaching the goals they've set themselves. Climate change, uh, as I said, is a very big topic and you know, affects different areas. Uh, I wanted to know if there are any 
you know, projects or how UN, you know, the UN's work in terms of providing food security, not only in Kazakhstan, uh, but also regionally, because we're also interested in Central Asia, how it's, you know, moving towards food security since we had a very dry summer this year, um, surprisingly for Astana. Uh, are there any projects in, in this regard? Well, globally, the UN is, of course, looking at, at uh, food systems as a priority. It's one of the six transformations that the UN is looking at. And as we know, Kazakhstan is one of the world's biggest wheat producers and, and is committed to also sharing that, that uh, uh, wheat uh, when it can. So I really want to commend Kazakhstan for the, uh, all the support it has provided to the UN and to the people of Afghanistan, not least when it comes to, to humanitarian support. There is also other initiatives that Kazakhstan has taken uh, on the regional dimension to support food security, not least the um, uh, organization, Islamic Organization for Food Safety. That is another Kazakh initiative uh, that we at the UN are now trying to make sure that this organization is also part of the wider. But the thing can also be on a, on a smaller scale, like for one individual farmer, you know, for one farmer who is in the Kislorida region, who is uh, using maybe um, farming rice. Rice takes an enormous amount of water. Yes. Okay. So as the UN, uh, FAO in this case again actually, are looking at ways of how to um, support the farmers in having the courage to shift to a crop that will yield the same economic income but will take less water and therefore they could potentially you know, save the resources and still have the same crop. There can be uh, other initiatives um, when it comes to, to, to food as well. And I think the safety that Kazakhstan comes up with the ideas of working with regional security, not purely for food security, but also regional security, is another thing that we really welcome. We know that food is one such destabilizer, but it's not the only one. I wanted to ask you uh, like a personal question. Uh, can you share with our viewers uh, your secret of success. I don't know what success is, you know, if you're happy then maybe you're, if you're happy then maybe that is what success is. I don't think you can measure success in, in any other way than your own personal satisfaction and I love my job, so I'm very lucky. Thank you very much, thank you for your time. Thank you.